Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Texas, things are popping. We are sending one of these teams to the Sweet 16. Will it be Iowa State or Texas A&M? India Jones, you're going to see her rebound out of area, and she's going to be running the floor in transition. Winner to the Sweet 16. Texas A&M gets the ball first in the white jerseys. And Iowa State, they're going to start out in a zone. They're going to really challenge Texas A&M, see if they can make those perimeter shots. Kayla Wells will see if she can. Oh, and Dia Jones tipped it into the hands of Iowa State's Kylie Fuhrbach. This is Iowa State's starting five. It's presented by Capital One. They start three freshmen, and there's a big shot from one of those freshmen, Emily Ryan. Emily Ryan, the point guard, she has come in. All three of the freshmen, all four really, because Aubrey, Aubrey Jones will come in as well. They come in with a lot of confidence. You would never know these, these four are freshmen. Sierra Johnson just short on the shot, but Aaliyah Wilson saves it. Wilson with the ball, the transfer from Arkansas. Skip pass to Jordan Nixon. Another chance for the Aggies. And that's what's so tough with Iowa State in a zone. To rebound out of the zone, that's tough. And Nixon throws it away. That'll be an over and back call. Bill Fenley brings in a now experienced group. I would say so because these three freshmen that start, they have now played an entire season in the Big 12. Emily Ryan has been their starting point guard from day one. That is a lot to ask for a freshman. But I tell you, she knows the when, to whom, and where to get the basketball. Emily Ryan sees the floor so well, and it works well in a motion offense run by Iowa State. Well, the who, it's got to be Ashley Jones, right? Number 24 in that Cardinal jersey, getting her the basketball. Although they can shoot from outside, too. Texas A&M starting lineup presented by Capital One. This has been the solid mainstay for A&M. Jordan Nixon has earned that point guard position this year. We've got four seniors and one sophomore starting for A&M. And they're starting cold in this second round game. You see with Ashley Jones, anytime she's going to try to penetrate in the paint, two players are going to be around her. Sierra Johnson with the block. India Jones bringing the ball up the floor. Short corner. Wow, Texas A&M 0 for 5. You know, watching the games in this tournament, You've got, game, you've got teams that are going against the zone. When you face a, a zone, it's not automatic that you've got to take perimeter shots. You can move the basketball and have flashers in the lane. If you're a team that gets paint points, that's what you got to do right there. Taylor Wells right in the middle of the lane. You don't have to settle for outside jumpers. 0 for 6 now for the Aggies. We are also glad to have Holly Rowe, the queen of the bubble for this tournament with us. Say, Holly. Hey, guys. Well, for Iowa State, they got off to a terrific start here in this tournament. In fact, Ashley Jones was one of four players to score over 30 points in that opening day, the most since 2013 when Elena Deladon and Brittany Griner went for 30. And guys, she has had to wait her turn. As a freshman, she had to sit behind Bridget Carlton. But it was ironic, it was her record she broke, those 33 points, a school record in an NCAA tournament game. Yeah, and it was an impressive performance to watch, Holly, too. I mean, she was just so efficient. And as you said, Carolyn, she can score on all four levels if you count the free throw line. Oh, she left that one there. But the other thing that is impressive about Ashley Jones, those 33 points, she got into foul trouble in that first half and still able to be productive. And that foul is on Jones. Yeah, Jones doesn't establish. She doesn't get herself in good defensive position. So that's the first on Ashley Jones. She has not scored yet 0 for 2, but does have a couple of rebounds. She averages 24 points a game. He 
Meanwhile, Texas A&M 0 for 7 from the field. Aaliyah Wilson down Main Street. That's what I'm talking about, where you don't have to settle for outside shots. Little shot fake and then drive to the middle of the lane. That's a travel on Emily Ryan. But you see Aaliyah Wilson against the zone. And the best place to attack the zone is right down the middle. She's either going to have the layup, or if the defense didn't collapse in, she would, if, it, if they had collapsed all the way in to close it off, she'd had shooters out on the perimeter. Leah Wilson, one of five starters for AM that averaged double figures. Sierra Johnson is one of those two. Donarski, and she's fouled. They get Kayla Wells on the call. Narski, the Big 12 freshman of the year. And Kylie Fuhrbach will take a seat for Iowa State with Narski at the free throw line. Tune into ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow at 7 when NC State takes on Colorado State in the first game of an NIT quarterfinals doubleheader. And visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. And of course, the NC State women's team, they're number one seed in this tournament. They've advanced to the Sweet 16 already. Top of the key, Ashley Jones. Yes. I love it. Ashley Jones, she misses her first few shots, but she knows she's got the talent. She is not gun shy. Three three-pointers already for the Cyclones. They're second in the Big 12 in three-point percentage. Sierra Johnson, clean up. Well, Texas A&M has made the adjustment. You can penetrate in on that zone, make two people guard one. Someone's going to be open. This Texas A&M team has adjusted all season. They can morph and do whatever you take away. They're going to give you something else. They're so versatile. That's why they only lost it. They've only lost two games. They've won a handful of games by scoring over 80. Another handful of games of holding teams under 60. And then when it comes to those games decided by five or less, Texas A&M's in those as well. Iowa State on top of the number two seed, the Aggies. Iowa State and Texas A&M going head to head. Looking to make it in the Sweet 16. It would be the first for Iowa State since 2010. For Texas A&M, they're trying to make their third straight Sweet 16 appearance. You know, you've got the tale of two teams. You have a very experienced team in Texas A&M. And we talk about those freshmen for Iowa State. And having freshmen, you know what the, the blessing is for having freshmen? They don't know what to be nervous about. This crew just comes in and plays. Yeah, these freshmen have been such a major part of Iowa State's team this year. They have been thrown to the fire, and Bill Finley has told us numerous times that they have just handled it, and they've gotten through things. There's been some learning experiences, obviously, along the way, but, hey, they are in the second round right now of the NCAA tournament. Well, these freshmen will tell you what has made them feel comfortable is the leadership from Ashley Jones and Kristen Scott that have really just taught this young crew along the way. Look, they produce 41% of the scoring for the Cyclones. Holly, it's a pretty impressive freshman class for Iowa State. 
It really is, and, and what you're saying is Ashley Jones actually said on her recent Zoom call, hey, it's the freshmen that are so aggressive. They're actually pushing these upperclassmen. They've come in and been so aggressive. As you see, a nice three there from Kristen Scott. She said, they have really fueled our fire. They're so competitive. They're pushing us in practice, and this aggressive attitude from the five freshmen are really helping them be more competitive. And Holly, how about this group of freshmen during the COVID shutdown? They were driving around trying to find in Ames, Iowa, church parking lots where they could go work out outside. I love it. Hey, it's paying off now, now that we're deep into March. Iowa State survived a close game in the first round, 79-75 with Michigan State. It helps when Ashley Jones had those 33 points, of course. Ryan, there you go. And that's the thing about Iowa State. You can't think that you take away Ashley Jones and you shut him down. They've got options one, two, three, four, and five on the court. That was the first two-point field goal for Iowa State. Remember, they're four of five from three. Iowa State changed up now, going to a man-to-man -man defense. Aaliyah Wilson was okay with it. All 12 of AM's points coming in the paint. And a travel. Well, coming up next, right here on ESPN2, you can see sixth seeded Texas taking on the three seed UCLA here at the Alamo Dome. You can always watch every game on the ESPN app. I cannot wait to watch this next game. You talk about star power, Charlie Collier, Michaela Onyanwede, Charisma Osborne. I'm excited. Joanne Allen Taylor for the Texas Longhorns as well. It's going to be guard to guard, post to post. That's going to be a terrific matchup. We'll have those two teams after we finish with Texas A&M and Iowa State, winner to the Sweet 16. Iowa State's defense just took it away from Wells. You watch Iowa State, they just built a wall, closed it down, not allowing, trying to stop the penetration of AM in the paint. They called the foul on Destiny Prince of Texas AM. Kelly Furbach, all about the threes today. That's five of them. Ball possession arrow to the Aggies. That physical Bill Fenley is heated. Morgan Kane fighting for that rebound. This will be Ray Johnson, number four in Cardinal. And Morgan Kane in the game to really battle with India Jones. Jones only one rebound so far today. Shot clock winding down on Johnson. Blocked by Jones. The rotation, Jones ends up on Ray Johnson, but she's got that size and that reach to block that shot. There's just three seconds on the shot clock for the Cyclones. Gearbach, oh, she's got to shoot. She doesn't know. Shot clock violation. Still on for the Aggies. Leah Wilson. 
Jordan Nixon back to Wells outside. They still have time. Kayla Wells a deep three. Exactly, going to Ashley Jones. Leah Wilson with some good defense though on Jones. 3.2 seconds left in the quarter. It'll be Cyclones inbounding it. Aubrey Jones! That is six three-pointers. Iowa State is six of seven for three. The Cyclones, they've got it going like a whirlwind. And in Aubrey Jones from the top, knocking down the three. Iowa State right now on top. Iowa State has come out. Texas A&M really struggled to score early on in this game. You see the Jones family there. The rest of the sisters, Courtney, Kelsey, and Bailey in the crowd. That's the first three-pointer for Texas A&M. They are trying to dig themselves out of some cold shooting to start. It's so interesting to watch Texas A&M, how they just morph into whatever it is they need to do in order to score points. Their versatility has helped them all season as Donarski connects. connects. Jordan Nixon again. Remember, she's coming off a career high 21 points. Look, she hadn't cooled off, doesn't look like. But Gary Blair said, yes, you want your point guard to score, but doesn't want her to fall in love with that because her number one job is distributing the basketball. But she's taking what the defense is giving her. And there was a point guard competition before the season started at Texas A&M, and Jordan Nixon, the transfer from Notre Dame, won that starting spot, and she has kept it. Cyclone's running out of time. Out of bounds off of A&M. But just one second on the shot clock. Madison Wise and Kylie Fierbach back in the game for Iowa State. One second. the rotation of Iowa State. Bill Finley is trying to keep fresh bodies on the court, but, but that may be affecting their momentum. Jordan Nixon. Hey, until they're going to guard you, Nixon needs to continue to pull that trigger. Johnson with the block. He checked. And Jordan Nixon was just on a roll. What a difference she has made, too, for this Texas A&M team. from New York, of course, started her career at Notre Dame. A couple of times this season, she has had the game-winning field goal. They were both in games against Arkansas. And we got to give her props, too, because in the regular season finale against South Carolina, her face hit the floor, and she was covered in blood, eventually checked back in the game. And Texas A&M won the regular season title. Hey, that's New York tough right there. But Jordan Nixon really has won the trust from Gary Blair of running this team. He likes her decision making and right there, getting the ball inside to Sierra Johnson. Six straight points for Texas A&M. Well, keep an eye, Aaliyah Wilson is guarding 
Ashley Jones. Wilson's the best defender on this Aggie basketball team. Kristen Scott gets the rebound. It's tied up by Sierra Johnson. She's got some fire in her in the second quarter. We see Kristen Scott back in the game. In the Big 12 tournament, she had some shin issues. In their first game against Michigan State in the NCAA tournament, Bill Finley thought he was going to limit her to about 20 minutes. But down the stretch in the last five minutes, he looked at her and he asked her, what do you want to do? And she said, there's no way I'm coming out of this ball game. <laughs> That's a senior for you right there. Kristen Scott averages 12 points a game. Holly Scott's pretty impressive. Yeah, she is. And you can see she really is having some issues with her shins. She's got these gray wraps, kind of compression wraps, up to the top of her shins there. Coach Finley said she's in so much pain. She's not even practicing right now. She's only playing in games. And like you said, he was going to minute her limits. And she said, oh, no, no way. But she is playing through quite a bit of pain. Yeah, and it's even more impressive, Holly. She's two for two from three today. So still scoring and contributing through that pain. Green. And there's a traveling violation on McKenzie Green. Excuse me, that's Alexis Morris. Mary Blair, of course, won a national championship at Texas A&M back in 2011. It's been 10 years. He wants this team to take that next step towards doing it again. Well, it feels like with the experience that this team has and the diversity and the different ways that they can score, they can rebound, they can defend, that they have a chance to advance to that final four. Blocking foul on Emily Ryan. Jordan Nixon just keeping the pressure on the defense there. led by 10 in the first quarter. That's Alexis Morris who's whistled for the foul. Now what Iowa State did in their first game is they played a lot through Ashley Jones. Aaliyah Wilson has made it very difficult for Jones to get touches. And nowhere to go. She has to kick back out to Emily Ryan. Good thing they are just crushing threes. Well, you hear every time Ashley Jones gets the basketball, you hear Gary Blair say, help. And so all the defenders are showing help to Ashley Jones. Ashley Jones is then finding the open person. They've hit eight threes, 80% from three-point land for the Cyclones. That's going to be on Sierra Johnson. Her second. So Johnson will take a seat. India Jones checks back in for Texas A&M, it's Iowa State ball. So smart. I mean, every move, she's got it. Wise. 
It's going to be Iowa State ball. They are red hot from three-point land. I mean, look, you take away the inside, you try to take away the superstar, you know what? You better try to take away the three. That's what's working right now for Iowa State. Iowa State with a lead right now over Texas A&M. But watch, Ashley Jones does a nice job of recognizing, setting up the defense on Aaliyah Wilson. She takes a step to the screen, then cuts hard to the basket. She didn't automatically go right up into the layup. She knew the defense was coming to her, used the shot bait, and then gets the finish. Like those moves. Yeah. Ashley Jones has spent a lot of time working on those moves, Holly, in some unique places. Shut down. They were trying to find different courts that they could work out on, and they were able to use a family friend's barn. The Larson family has a 10,000 square foot barn about 15 minutes away from where the Jones family lives. So they would go over and work out in the bottom court of that barn, and, and right there, you see a blocking chart, a blocking call. But Jones at six feet knows that she's got to be nifty and crafty, and that's what she's able to do. Well, and she recognizes the defense is going to all come and collapse to her. And instead of running over the defense, she splits the defense. But the other thing, Holly, that Ashley Jones did with her dad is they watched tape and they went through different books, just trying to find counter moves for all the different defenses that she was going to face this season. She has eight of Iowa State's last 11 points right now. That work is paying off. And every time we have an opponent who's going to play Iowa State, they worry about how they're going to guard Ashley Jones because of those moves. She's already got Texas A&M in some foul trouble right now. Sierra Johnson and India Jones both have two fouls. India on the court right now, number 31 in white. Benarski blocked. Six blocks now for AM and Jordan Nixon. Nixon also tacks on a couple more points. Let's tell you, Jordan Nixon is producing the offense for Texas AM. She's reading that triangle in two and she's forcing the issue in transition. Ryan looking for some help. A little too much by Jones. There's Nixon. She's got 14 of their 16 points in this quarter. Madison Wise says no. Well, Nixon needed to recognize she was open, trying to force the pass inside. Emily Ryan still playing off Nixon. Winner to face either BYU or Arizona in the Sweet 16. That game currently on ESPNU. Oh, you can't leave her open. Dangerous. And I tell you what, Iowa State is doing. They're playing the odds. They're saying they're not going to allow. Oh, Jordan Nixon drew the charge right there. But Iowa State's not going to allow Texas A&M to get the ball to the paint. Well, coming up at AT&T 5G in the studio with Maria, Rebecca, and Andy Maryland just putting up a cool 100 points in their second round win. Plus, Oregon takes down Georgia. They'll get you caught up on everything that's been happening in the tournament that's coming up at the half. And Maryland got like 46 points off the bench. They are loaded with offense. It is incredible. What's their slogan right now? All gas, no brakes? All gas, no brakes. Go, baby, go. You better believe it. Are you Jones, I thought she might have gotten an extra step in. She 
slid that pivot foot. That's a travel for Iowa State. The scoring drought continues almost for three minutes. You see Bill Finley telling his team, when Ashley Jones has the ball, you've got to cut. You can't just stand and watch her. You've got to move. Texas A&M came out shooting it cold. They trailed by 11. Dia Jones all over. Ten seconds on the shot clock now. Pick and roll to Kane. Travel. That's four straight turnovers by the Cyclones. Well, Texas A&M turning up the defense, the communication, you can hear it, and the rotations off switch screens or off ball screens on a roller, the help has been there. Remember, it's a veteran group for A&M, that helps. Put back by India Jones, that is what she does. Rebounds and points. Absolutely, but she hasn't been very productive on the glass so far today. Got two fouls too, has to be careful, but Iowa State can hold for the final shot of the half. Keep an eye, Ashley Jones is at the top of your screen. Narski was looking for, this is Emily Ryan. India Jones has not given her any space. That's some tough defense, but Iowa State Leads by five at the half. Carolyn, they hit eight three-pointers in the opening well, they tried three minutes. Shutting down inside, but it's been the outside for the Cyclones. Cyclones looking for their first appearance in the Sweet 16 since 2010. It was back then they beat Green Bay in the second round to advance. Can they take down the number two seed to advance this year? and feeding Sierra Johnson. Both Johnson and India Jones picked up two fouls in that first half. Well, and you keep an eye, Gary Blair is one of the best at getting his team to execute down the stretch and in situations. And now offensively, his team is right in front of where he can send in, <laughs> he can send in instructions, but I would say they're still red hot from the three-point line. Didn't cool off at the half at all. Kristen Scott, three for three from three. India Jones is fouled by Donarski. Well, and right now, having both posts on the same side, making the bottom of that zone, make a de decision. The smaller defender ends up on India Jones. That's why they go to her inside. India Jones, just four points, four rebounds. She was also in some foul trouble. She averages a double-double, 12 points, and a team leading 10 rebounds a game. When Gary Blair talks about not having to run an offense to India Jones, that she can really clean up any mistakes, any missed shots, but she hadn't gotten those opportunities so far today. And Emily Ryan loses it. She had Jordan Nixon on her defending. Zone. Sierra 
shots, and she's the she's in double figures. The second Aggie to get there joins Jordan Nixon. On the switch, Ashley Jones has Jordan Nixon on her. Denarski in the corner. Rebound by Ashley Jones in traffic. Whatever. Just score it. Ashley Ten Jones rebounds now. She's got her a double-double. And you see, she knows when the shots are going up, so she plants herself inside to get that rebounding position. Marski feeding Kristen Scott. Foul on Nixon. To watch on the shot, Ashley Jones, she starts jockeying for position down low on India Jones and is able to get the basketball. And I like how she protects the basketball once she gets it before she goes back up for the shot. Ashley Jones with 13 points, 10 rebounds. That is her 13th double-double of the season. It's going to be Kristen Scott at the line. They're looking at Sierra Johnson right now, cleaning up a little blood. Oh, it's a contact, excuse me. Oh, oh without a mirror, just right back in. Ready I mean, to go. I get up in the morning and it takes me 15 minutes to get mine in. She just goes to the sideline, pops them back in just like that. <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? There's a lot at stake on the line right now. I gotta get a sense of urgency about my contact lenses, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Two shots coming for Kristen Scott. Kristen Scott is perfect from the three-point line. She's three for three today. Yeah, those were the first points for her that didn't come from behind the arc. She's got 11. Bill Finley managing her minutes. Remember, she's playing on those sore shins. Jones misses the hook. Morgan Kane working on Sierra Johnson down low. And a turnover by Iowa State. Yeah, but keep an eye, India Jones, she either is going to be on Emily Ryan or Lexi Donarski. Those are two key components to this Iowa State offense. And she brings a lot of length that does not sound fun. Leah Wilson at the elbow. She second guessed it. Instead of going smoothly right into her shot, it was an afterthought. She's two of seven from the field. <laughs> Ashley Jones, you bet. 10 three pointers now for Iowa State. Iowa State, they're not hesitant about putting the ball up. Bill Finley's motto is, put it up before you turn it over. Emily Ryan said, that's my kind of basketball. They're right at their average at 10 made threes a game, and Sierra Johnson finishes through contact. Remember, she is a senior. She is a leader on this team, doesn't want it to end. Well, you watch how Texas A&M really trying to overload to one side and then take advantage of that diagonal pass. Sierra Johnson will have that size advantage on the back of the zone. Holly. 
Well, you guys saw Sierra Johnson there getting emotional, saying, let's go. She doesn't like that they're not fiery right now. They're getting the ball inside to her, and Iowa State does not have a good mismatch. They call her mama. She is the leader of all athletes there at Texas A&M's campus, and you can see her really trying to put this team on her back right now. Yeah, we've heard from Sierra Johnson several times, Holly. She is such an integral part of this team, of them getting to this point, and so many different things she's done on campus, like you mentioned, not just on the basketball court. You and you. Well, Texas A&M is so much better when Sierra Johnson is, fi is firing and rolling the ball inside. That was Wilson on the miss from three. She's gonna knock it down. Iowa State right now up 10. The junior, Ashley Jones. You can't lose her. She's got a great three-point shot. Better find number 24 of the Cyclones. Ashley Jones with 19 points. 7 of 15 from the field, 4 of 6 from the 3. She has scored 16 of Iowa State's last 26 points. Her family watching on as Iowa State tries to make it to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2010. Pops looks like he has already played two and a half quarters as well sitting up in the stands. <laughs> it's stressful. There's a lot on the line. Tough pass, but Sierra Johnson just couldn't finish. And a foul underneath. On Sahara Jones of Texas A&M. We'll step aside. It's a 10-point lead for Iowa State. Holly, I see the mark on his hand. He also reached in his pocket. He's got that coin in his other hand right now, rubbing that for a little bit of good luck. Texas A&M trying to make it back to the Sweet 16 for the third straight tournament. They'll need a little bit of help. They are down 10 to a hot shooting Iowa State team. They've hit 11 threes. Can't finish, but an offensive rebound. How does she get that with India Jones and Johnson down low? Offensive foul. But well, tell you the reason that Iowa State is getting shots and getting rebounds is the defense having to over rotate there that time. Jordan Nixon was able to stop the penetration and take the charge, but the accountability one on one defense and not requiring help would definitely help out the defense for Texas A&M. That is the second foul on Ashley Jones of Iowa State. Jordan Nixon, first bucket for her here in the third quarter. She had 14 points in the second. Uh, Jordan Nixon is such a competitor. If she's got to put this team on her back, she is willing to do that. Number five for Texas A&M. Jones in the corner. Janarski. That is number 12, ladies and gentlemen. 12 three-pointers for Iowa State. They are fearless. So is Jordan Nixon. Yeah, but in order for Texas A&M to get back in this game, they've got to quit over helping. The last time Jordan Nixon reached in to help, that left Donarski open. And a turnover by Iowa State. Will the NCAA Men's Championship Sweet 16 begins Saturday on CBS and TBS, or you can stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com.
course, for the women's Sweet 16 coming up this weekend. We've got you covered on our ESPN networks. One of these teams will be there facing either BYU or Arizona. Leah Wilson has really struggled with that jump shot. Normally, that is so pure. Lexi Dignarski, the Big 12 Freshman of the Year, the highest rated recruit to sign with Iowa State in the program's history. That's a two for Nixon. But you watch how Iowa State is just picking the defense apart. If you help off, they're gonna make that extra pass. If you don't and there's no help, they take advantage of the driving lane. Only Ryan had a layup, but hey, why take two when you can get three? Largest lead for the Cyclones. Lexi Donarski, the McDonald's All-American, has the last eight points for Iowa State. When you watch Emily Ryan, as she is just handling the basketball, she's looking for opportunities to drive. As soon as help comes, she's able to kick out. Trail three from Pitts. Turnover by the Cyclones. Aaliyah Wilson. It's a good quick strike for Texas A&M. They can go two for one. They should have the last possession of this quarter. Taking it to the hoop, taking it to the free throw line. Fouls on Aaliyah Wilson. Let's see what Iowa State does. They use a lot of the shot clock, and then at the end, get the ball to Ashley Jones, because then she's going to either get the basket or she's going to get to the free throw line. But she's going to finish the possession. 19 points, 14 rebounds for Ashley Jones. Well, the puck drops on an ESPN Humans ice hockey doubleheader when Michigan and Minnesota Duluth face off Friday at 4 Eastern in the Fargo Regional Semis, also available on the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. And Gary Blair has a play for every situation, and he sent Jordan Nixon and Aaliyah Wilson down to the other end. Two of his best perimeter scores. This is Nixon to Wilson in the paint. Iowa State just 10 minutes away from its first Sweet 16 since 2010. Texas A&M right now trails by nine. They're gonna need more of this from Jordan Nixon. She has put the Aggies on her back. She is locked and loaded, zero in, zeroing in. She is nine of 16 from the floor right now, but she's gonna need some help. 20 points and Holly, Jordan Nixon has been clutch for Texas A&M this season. That's right, in their last win that they escaped in a close game against Troy, she had nine of her points, in, 21 points in the fourth quarter. They asked her about it post-game, and she said, you know, I'm from New York. I, I 
grew up in chaos. I'm used to things when they're chaotic. I'm calm. She's used to being that kind of calm presence on the court for them. We'll see if she can do it in this fourth quarter. They will need her. Texas A&M trying to make its third straight Sweet 16, but Iowa State has been hot shooting all night. 13 three-pointers. Talk about calm. Jordan Nixon has 14 of her 20 points came in that second quarter for Texas A&M, but Ashley Jones and company have been rocking. Jones with her double-double. She's got 10 straight games with 20 or more points. But Here Alexis comes A&M. Morse. She comes in, she brings the speed, but she also is a threat from the perimeter for Texas A&M. Nine straight points for the Aggies. And a travel. It'll be interesting, Courtney, to watch down the stretch. Now remember the youth of Iowa State against the experience of Texas A&M. Iowa State has started three freshmen all season. The freshmen account for about 41% of their points. Beautiful shot from India Jones. AM has been in close games in the regular season, so this team, they don't panic. Jones. Skips it to Morris. Wilson creating. And then you go to Sierra Johnson. She gets herself to the free throw line. You mentioned it, Carolyn. This Texas A&M team has found ways to win in any type of ball game this season. They are 6-1 in games decided by five points or less. They're 7-0 when it's a high-scoring affair, when they put up 80 or more points. They're 10-0 when allowing 60 points or less. They can adapt. They've got that experience and so many versatile pieces. And I think that because of that and what they have demonstrated, able to win in so many different situations, allows Gary Blair, as nervous as he may be on the inside, he's showing that calmness on the sideline, on the outside. Staying positive. Anim's <laughs> getting after it now. Check my license, age doesn't matter. I'm ready to pull the trigger. She's got 15. Wilson. State has led by as many as 12 tonight in the third quarter. <laughs> Ashley Jones gets the foul, gets the bucket. A&M wanted a traveling violation. Well, just the composure of the junior. Ashley Jones continuing to attack the basket. She has one thing in mind when she's coming in the paint. She is going to finish the play. Second foul on Wilson. Ashley Jones is second in the nation in made free, free throws this season. Yeah. 23 and 14 for Jones. You see Iowa State in a box and one. The one that they are on right now is Jordan Nixon. It's 
17 turnovers for Iowa State. Will Texas A&M be able to capitalize? They were having success when they would overload the zone. This is some easy shots. Sierra Johnson will get to shoot a couple as she's fouled by Madison Wise. Johnson's already got back-to-back -back games of 16 points. These teams are trying to make it to the Sweet 16. We have every game of the Women's NCAA Championship covered for you, Sweet 16. Start Saturday and Sunday. We'll start the Final Four on Friday, April 2nd. Championship game, April 4th at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Who knows who will be there by then? We've had some great games already. Yeah, today we've even got a close one going on. BYU and Arizona got it all tied up. Everybody's fighting to live for another day. Yeah, that one's important because the winner of this game gets the winner of BYU-Arizona in the Sweet 16. Texas a and bringing a little run and jump, forced the turnover. Alexis Morris off the window. Oh, traveling violation. A&M has had some chances right under the basket and have struggled with layups. And they're creating the opportunities, but not able to pay it off. They put the pressure on the freshman point guard, Emily Ryan. She's turned it over five times to the corner. The three ball is your friend, Iowa State. Number 15. And that's another freshman knocking down the three. Texas A&M ball. <laughs> Iowa State set a record of 19 three-pointers made against Texas Tech during the regular season. They are at 15 right now. Nixon in and out. Rob. I mean, that was halfway down. touched it yeah yeah they're gonna overturn the call it will stay with Texas A&M yeah I thought Emily Ryan touched the basketball as it went out of bounds right there yep it's a great hustle though by the freshman 17 seconds on the shot clock for Texas A&M so they've got time here approaching the five minute mark the Aggies have never led And the thing that Bill Finley loves about this team, and he recruits to this system, he's got a bunch of gym rats. He said at times he's got to lock them out. They love the game, and they want to continue to play. They want their season to go on. This will be the first time in 11 years that they've made the Sweet 16 if they can pull it off. Some wise inside. Morris pushing.
They called a blocking foul on Emily Ryan. She is slow to get back up. Only one team can move on to the Sweet 16. Under five to go. Maria, how exciting are these games? Remember, the winner of that BYU-Arizona game gets either Texas A&M or Iowa State. Check out the fourth quarter. Jordan Nixon, who is A&M's leading scorer in this game, only two points. Iowa State has hit two threes. A&M struggling to score here. Alexis Morris. She'll take it again. And Morris had an opportunity there when India Jones passed it out. Go back inside. Power through the paint. Don't have to just rely, rely on the three-point shot. Wilson with some good defense on Ashley Jones. Kayla Wells, big time bucket. A&M no, trapped by 12 State. points in the third quarter. And Iowa State's got to play with some composure because Texas A&M is going to try to speed them up defensively. That's why Alexis Morris is in this game. Yeah. Emily Ryan with the layup. The freshman. Steady. Emily Ryan, no panic, no problem. Iowa State has gotten 34 points from its freshman. a foul on Kayla Wells. So each time Texas A&M tries to get themselves right back in it, Emily Ryan finds an opportunity to score it herself, or she's finding opening sco open scoring opportunities. Both teams with three team fouls here in the fourth quarter as we approach the three-minute mark. Winner to the Sweet 16. Aaliyah Wilson is on Ashley Jones. Indiya Jones is on Madison Wise. Ryan got blocked by Wilson. Wells running. And gets fouled. Leah Wilson played the play. She totally left Ashley Jones and stayed with Emily Ryan in order to get that steal. Now free throws are gonna be crucial down the stretch. Texas A&M is a 73% free throw shooting team. Kayla Wells hits 77. And I would expect to see Texas A&M again bring that run and jump press, full court press. She doesn't want it to end. Terrific defense. Kayla Wells rushes out at the shooter, causes Fearbach to put it on the ground, and then India Jones is right there, that second layer of defense, to take the charge. Seven to two run. Foul 
on Donarski. So that puts Texas A&M in the bonus. Now keep an eye on this again. If Texas A&M able to make their free throws, get their press set, that run and jump defense, Iowa State's putting two back, or they have before now. Everybody's on the line. They're worried about getting the ball inbounds. You see Gary Blair talking to his team, talking about one possession at a time. You don't have to get it all back at once. This is the sixth time that Texas A&M has been within three points. They have trailed the, the entire game. Now in the next foul, if Texas A&M fouls again, now it will put Iowa State at the free throw line the rest of the way. This is Donarski. Back to Ashley Jones. Oh, and Adia Jones is whistled for the foul. Ashley Jones is so good at getting underneath the defense, going to that left hand when India Jones reaches across. That's why she gets called for the foul. That's the third foul on India Jones. There's some confusion over whether Texas A&M is subbing or not. Destiny Pitts has run in and out of the game a couple times. But Ashley Jones at the free throw line under two minutes to go. She has missed one today. She's an 88% free throw shooter. points for Jones. Family watching on one of five kids. Two, two of them on this team trying to make it to the Sweet 16. Nixon for two. Clutch today. 24 for Jordan Nixon. She loves the chaos. She loves the big moments. A new career high after she had 21 points in the first round. Right now, Texas A&M doesn't have to foul. They just got to focus on getting a stop. Where Iowa State, they are just so good at picking you apart. Defense help, they're going to find an open shooter. Running out of time, though. Shot clock violation. That's the 20th turnover for the Cyclones. Now, Texas A&M, they don't need a three. It doesn't have to be a three. They can get a two. They got to make sure on the miss, get an offensive rebound. Where Iowa State, they've got to box out, not allow any second chance opportunities for the Aggies. Gary Blair will take the timeout here with a minute 12 to go. Coming up next, we are not done after this game right here on ESPN2. We will see UCLA and Texas. The three seed and the six seed coming to play at the Alamo Dome. Of course, you can watch it also on the ESPN app. Right now, though, Gary Blair has called timeout. Texas A&M has two timeouts remaining and the ball. Both teams are in the bonus. Well, and now Texas A&M, they need to make sure the shot that is taken, everybody's aware of who's taking that shot so they can anticipate and get in good rebounding position. Where Iowa State, Iowa State, 
Iowa State needs to try to defensively keep an eye on where Jordan Nixon is and the best three-point shooter. That's number three, Destiny Pitts. Nixon spins into the double team. She's got Sierra Johnson to bail her out. Texas A&M within one. And timeout, Iowa State. Remember, they can advance the ball if they want to. 56.5 seconds left. Well, in that last possession, Jordan Nixon is forcing the issue. Knowing the defense is going to help, she throws over the top. That creates the opportunity for number 40, Sierra Johnson, underneath, and she is able to finish and pull the Aggies within one. Texas A&M has outscored Iowa State 21 to 13 here in the fourth quarter. What's got to happen here for Iowa State? They have the basketball. Well, Iowa State, they have got to take care of the ball. The pressure defense that Texas A&M showed the last time it was a shot clock violation. So they cannot, Iowa State cannot wait too late to get deep into the shot clock. I would pretty much think that Bill Finley is going to go to that woman right there, Ashley Jones, because if she's not been able to score, she's been able to get herself to the free throw line. Texas A&M doesn't have to foul here. They should get a possession back. Still 56 seconds on the clock. Yeah, the number one focus for Texas A&M, contest every shot and make sure that, that Iowa State doesn't get a second one. Well, Jones almost lost it. play through number 24, Ashley Jones, especially when the shot clock is running down. Talk about old fashioned, fundamental. She makes it work and gets a chance for the old fashioned three point play. Dad Brian watching on. Iowa State trying to make their first Sweet 16 since 2010. It's a two possession game. Still, Texas A&M doesn't have to take a three. They can get a quick two. Rebound by Jones. And Dia Jones with the putback. And Gary Blair wants them to look at the clock. It looked like it still rolled after time was called. After the rebound. Yeah, it still did continue to run. back to the monitor and put time back on the clock. It's now been set to 24.5. Iowa State called timeout. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, both teams in the bonus. Well, and Iowa State called that timeout to advance the basketball. And the number one thing that Bill Finley has to focus on is he has got to get the ball in bounds. What? Texas A&M needs to do is try to get a five second call, get a steal. Because there's only 24 seconds, Iowa State could hold the whole possession. So Texas A&M is going to have to foul in order to get the ball back. But they've got to be choosy on who they send to the free throw line. You may not want to send Ashley Jones. An 88% free throw shooter. She'll get the ball. And they do foul her. Alexis Morris almost had the steal for Texas A&M, but they say the foul was called before that. So Ashley Jones will shoot two. So now Texas A&M, they still have two timeouts. She made these or 
even if she doesn't win, Texas A&M gets possession, automatic timeout, advance the basketball. Seven straight points for Ashley Jones and timeout Texas A&M. They still have one remaining. Well, in Texas A&M, there is still time enough on the clock. Did not have to rely on the three. They can go for the best available shot and then rebound the heck out of the ball. Iowa State, they have got to be disciplined now. If Texas A&M takes a three, you don't want to foul a shot. You don't want to foul a shooter on that three-point shot. Force the drive, force the two. And then you got to expect that Bill Finley will call timeout. He has two left to advance the basketball down in front of his bench. The spot in the Sweet 16 is on the line. Iowa State, it would be their first appearance since 2010. For Texas A&M, it would be three straight if they could complete the comeback. Well, now I've got to believe that Gary Blair wants to have Destiny Pitts in the game, along with Aaliyah Wilson. Pitts is his best three-point shooter. You have Jordan Nixon, who was hot in that first half. She has been able to knock down some perimeter shots as well, but they need India Jones and Sierra Johnson on any shot crashing the boards. Well, Johnson's out of the game right now. India Jones is the one inbounding. And here we go, 20.6 seconds remain. This is Aaliyah Wilson to Jordan Nixon. The two from Nixon goes. I still think after the shot, the clock was running. They are taking a look at the clock. You see the clock better here. Goes in and you see the clock, it still was a couple of more seconds ticked off the clock. Yeah, so they've gone back and put it at 13.3 seconds. Iowa State and Texas A&M both with one timeout remaining as Iowa State took their timeout here. And now again, Bill Finley is going to run a sideline out of bounds play, and I would put the ball and make sure the ball got to Ashley Jones. She is their best three-point shooter. I'm Texas A&M. I'm double teaming Ashley Jones, not letting her get the ball. You don't necessarily have to have a defender on the ball. Try to get that five-second count. If they get the ball in, Texas A&M has got to foul. Both teams one timeout remaining. Get it into Donarski. Here comes the trap. They tie it up, and AM has possession. Was there something extra here? Alexis Morris, number 45 in white. Did she take an elbow to the face by Donarski? I don't think it actually hit her. I think it did. Yeah, maybe one of those initial throws because this training staff is taking a look at her lip.
Oh, yeah. It looks like the yeah. right elbow of Donarski, when it came across, clipped her right on the chin right there. Yeah, right there. It was blocked by Aaliyah Wilson's hand. Now they can go to the monitor and look to upgrade this to see if it is worth anything else in an, in, an intentional foul or a disqualifying foul. Do you think there's something extra there? I, I think there was with the swinging of the elbows. I, I, I think that they could come away with that, with that being an intentional foul. That Officials happened. We do want to remind you, though, that they had whistled a held ball, and the possession arrow was pointing to Texas A&M. Iowa State has led by as many as 12 points in this game. That was in the third quarter, but Texas A&M has outscored them here, 25 to 18, in the fourth. Alexis Morris, she's the one that took the elbow to the chin. So you see the left arm as the Narski comes across. It's her right elbow right there. Yeah. Catches, catches Alexis Morris right on the chin. It was hard to see the first time because of Leah Wilson's hand. It was right in that same spot, but yeah, she did get some of that. They're looking to see if they're going to upgrade this foul. After reviewing the play, there is no additional penalty. All right, so they will not upgrade this. It should be Texas A&M ball. We'll explain it to both head coaches. So now with 11.2 seconds, Gary Blair gets possession. He could call timeout and advance the ball. And that's what he will do. That is the final timeout for Texas A&M. And so now for Texas A&M, you only need a two to tie. All right, you want to live to play longer. You don't necessarily, you don't, you can go for the three for the win the way Jordan Nixon has shot the basketball maybe, but I would power it inside. I would go with going to India Jones or Sierra Johnson inside. Nixon had success of driving in, knowing the defense is going to collapse, and she's been able to throw over the top. For Iowa State, like you switch off screens and you defend penetration like your life depends on it. If you're going to give up anything, make Texas A&M take a perimeter shot. to Jordan Nixon. Clock winding down. Just drives straight to the basket and ties it up. Jordan Nixon has been clutch all night, adding to that career high in a big fashion to tie this game. You should have known that Gary Blair is going to put the ball in the hands of Jordan Nixon. She has been able to close out some clutch games, two against Arkansas, and she gets the finish right there. She just lowers her head. She goes back, goes right by Maddie Wise, focus, finish, and ties this ball game up. Iowa State led by 12 points in the third quarter. Not anymore. Jordan Nixon, a new career high, 28 points. 
Now, Iowa State takes its final timeout with six seconds on the clock. Well, in, in Iowa State, they've got options. We saw how efficient Ashley Jones is. If she doesn't get the bucket, she gets an opportunity at the free throw line. Lexi Donarski, a freshman, has shown no fear in the decision-making of the point guard, freshman Emily Ryan. She also is an option for Iowa State. Texas A&M has got to switch all screens. I can, I can imagine that Gary Blair is going to put size on Emily Ryan. He's going to double team and make somebody else besides Ashley Jones beat him and have Ali, Aliyah Wilson on Lexi Donarski. Emily Ryan to inbound. Six seconds for the Cyclones. Ashley Jones loses it. It'll stay with Iowa State, but the clock now at 3.9. But still, pick the picker for Iowa State. They're going to review this to see who touched it last. Ooh. I don't know. You see Jordan Nixon's hands get underneath, but then that last attempt by Ashley Jones, that could be off Iowa State. Right there. Oh, it's hard to tell. They originally said it was Iowa State ball. I can't, I can't tell right there. If there's not enough evidence to overturn it, they'll go with the original call and give it to the Cyclones. No timeouts for either team. Oh, from that angle, it looks like to me, Ashley Jones touched it. Might be just a fingernail. That's really tough. Is it, is it enough to overturn the call, though? Yeah, that's, I, I don't know. That's close. But in a situation like this, I'd rather the officials take their time, make sure to get it right. Because if this is Iowa State's ball underneath their own basket, executing an underneath out of bounds with the scoring options they have, as opposed to if it's Texas A&M's ball, Texas A&M doesn't have any more timeouts. They would have to go the length of the court in 3.9 seconds. team with any timeouts possession arrow is pointing to Iowa State again the original call was that it was Iowa State ball they will stick with that call the Cyclones will take it Inconclusive video evidence, so we stay with the call on the floor. The call is being reset to 4.1. So there you go, 4.1 seconds, Iowa State basketball. A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. Really, when you're defending Iowa State, it's not just a layup or a cut to the basket. They got three-point threats as well. To Jones underneath. No fouls called. Point three on the clock now. It's as out of bounds off of Texas A&M. 
Now with .3 seconds, it's a, gotta be a tap. Size on the ball because it's gonna be, it's gotta be a tap. The officials went back over. They've been talking to Gary Blair. And they put one second on the clock. So now there is time for a catch and shoot. Not in time. Over time we go. Tied up at 75. We are not done yet, Maria. Wow. Texas A&M trailed by 12 points in the third quarter. They have battled back behind 28 points by Jordan Nixon to tie this game. And Carolyn Peck, we've got overtime with a spot in the Sweet 16 on the line. Well, Jordan Nixon has really put on a show as well as Ashley Jones for Iowa State. A thing to keep an eye on though, Courtney, is Aaliyah Wilson, the best defender for Texas A&M. She's got four fouls right now. And she has had the responsibility at times to be on Lexi Donarski. Sometimes she's been on Ashley Jones. It's been a chess match with Gary Blair between he and Bill Finley in the matchups. Texas A&M, a veteran team, a lot of experience. Iowa State, they've started three freshmen all season long, but look where it's gotten them. A chance to make it to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2010. So impressed with the composure of those freshmen for Iowa State. You can't really tell a difference between them and the seniors that are playing for Texas A&M. They'll immediately stop play. And give the ball to Texas A&M. Three number two seeds have already advanced to the Sweet 16 in this tournament. Will Texas A&M join them? Inside to Sierra Johnson. They've struggled with close range shots. Yeah, Texas A&M has the size advantage down low inside. They're just not able to finish. They got fortunate. Iowa State knocked it out of bounds. There's Leah Wilson. Nixon lets it fly. Jordan Nixon, just her second three, but she's over 30 points now. Seven straight points for the Aggies. That's New York, calm, cool, and collected. Number five, Jordan Nixon. First time Texas A&M has led tonight. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The three has been so good to Iowa State this evening, they've hit 15 of them. And now with Texas A&M with the lead, they don't need to rush. They can be patient, take good shots, but they've got to be sure to get to the glass. And that's a foul on India Jones. That's her fourth. So now that's two players for Texas A&M, two key players for A&M in foul trouble. India Jones has four, and Aaliyah Wilson has four. Jones 11 
excuse me, 10 for 11 from the free throw line tonight. And Jones will come down with it. She's had 19 in the second half here. And Wilson's got four guarding Ashley Jones. She's got to be careful. Morgan Cage comes in just in the nick of time. Well, whenever you get a double team on Ashley Jones, if your person is going to the double team, you be the cutter. India Jones does what she does, rebound. Sierra Johnson in traffic. Iowa State takes it away from her. Texas A&M has missed its last four shots. Well, with this zone defense, what was working for Texas A&M was an overload of the zone. Wilson was looking for space and she found it. Malia Wilson now in double figures, one of three for the Aggies. Again. Donarski. Their 16th three-pointer. These freshmen are cool, calm, and collected. So is Jordan Nixon. Oh, the guards are going back and forth right now, creating off the bounce, penetrating in. The option, though, that Iowa State has penetrating in. They got shooters on the perimeter. Fierbach. Iowa State has struggled with turning the ball over tonight. 23 of them. Well, you know, Bill Finley's philosophy is shoot it before you turn it over. It's a season high in turnovers, and he will make a sub. Madison Wise checks in the game, replacing Fierbach. Well, Madison Wise is in to bring some size. She brings a defensive presence for Iowa State. Keep an eye on double, Destiny double Pitts. In the first game, Destiny Pitts has checked in and Dia Jones is out. Yeah, Pitts is their best three-point shooter. Dinarski on the move. That's not a matchup she wants. Sierra Johnson going and trapping anybody that comes in the paint. Turnover, it's Pitts. Pitts rushed it right there. There's a four second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Ashley Jones is gonna try to attack. She didn't get the two, she's trying to get to the free throw line. Johnson makes it really hard to score. Jordan Nixon, time winding down the sweet 16. Belongs to the Aggies. The 
sweetest feeling of the season is Texas A&M's. For the third time, Jordan Nixon has a buzzer beater to propel Texas A&M to victory.